Hello everyone. Welcome to my video presentation for week one of our intro to Python class. First of all, a few words about myself. My name is Tom Whiting, and I live in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb of Philadelphia, uh, which is in the eastern portion of the United States. The topic that I've selected for my presentation today is functions in Python. As you may know, functions are a very powerful construct in Python. And not just in Python, but virtually any programming language that's out there. So some of the basic questions that I want to cover today are answer questions like, what, first of all, what is a function? Why do we need to use them? How do I go about writing a function in Python? You know, what are the semantics? And we'll also look at a few actual functions using a code sculptor. Before we get into the technical side of things, I wanted to tell you a story. Meet Anna. Anna is my friend who works at my local bakery. Anna makes the best cakes in the world. Well, most of the time. So Anna comes into, the, uh, into work and she gets an order for a cake. So she gathers up all her ingredients from the shelf and she starts working her magic. A few hours later, she produces the most beautiful looking cake. And then she puts in all the finishing touches. The customer arrives at the pickup time and gets their cake and takes it to their family. And everyone is happy. Anna is happy, the bakery is happy, and the customer is happy. All right, the next day, Anna comes to work she gets another customer. The customer tells Anna exactly what they want. Well, this customer is throwing a big party and they want a cake for this party. Anna goes back to the kitchen and starts doing her thing. Well, this time she was a bit careless and sloppy. She didn't use all her best ingredients from yesterday. She didn't measure out all the ingredients exactly. And then she delivers the cake. Well, guess what? The customer was not so happy, and Anna was not happy. All right, the next day Anna comes to work again. She gets an order on the phone. She goes to the kitchen and uh, starts making her cake. She was very careful with every step, measuring out all the ingredients exactly. Then she puts the cake in the oven and falls asleep. By the time she woke up, the cake was ruined, and the customer was not happy and Anna was not happy. Well, what if Anna had this magic box where she could have all her ingredients set in one place, all her processes will be recorded correctly in this magic box, and all the intricate output or finishing touches that she does, they're all clearly defined in this magic box. And then she never has to think about those things again. So the next time when she gets a customer looking for one cake or if she gets an order for a large party, she could call or invoke, if you will, this magic box and, will, and it will always produce the same consistent output. And when she calls this magic box, she could change uh, a few parameters, you know, things like the size of the cake, the number of layers on the cake, the color scheme she wants to put for the cake, the words that the customer wants put on top of the cake, those things could differ. But her core processes have already been defined in this box, and those won't change. And the customer will always get the same consistent results, and they will be happy, and Anna will be happy. Well, that's what a function is, fundamentally. It is a, a packaged unit of code. And when I say packaged, I mean that loosely and not in any technical sense of the term. It is a unit of code that performs a particular task. In our silly example from before, that function or unit of code was called make a cake. And that's what it did. A function is a piece of code that we can call or invoke from various parts of our program. And by that we mean we can write this piece of code and call it as many times as we want. 
So if there is something in your program that is repetitive, that repetitive code is probably a good candidate to be converted into a function. All right, let's talk about input parameters. Those are things that you give into the function. In our example from before, the make a cake function had parameters like the size of the cake, the number of layers in the cake, etc. Those are input parameters, and those are not required for every function that you write. Also, the return value. This is what the function in turn gives you back. All right, so I'm here at codesculptor.org to write some Python code. So the first thing I want to do is explain how to write a function in Python. So as any good programmer would do, before you start writing actual code, you would put in some valuable comments explaining what the piece of code does. So when you or someone else looks at your code a year from now, they can quickly get up to speed by reading your comments. All right, so there are two ways to, to write comments in Python. For a single line comment, you can proceed it by a hash symbol, also known as the pound sign. Here is a single line comment. All right, if you wanted to do a lengthier comment, you could do so by putting three single quotes. Whatever you type in after this would be treated as a comment. All right, this is how you would do a, a multi-line comment in Python. All right, my simple text uh, test function is going to be a hello world function. So let me make a comment to that effect. All right. To define a function, you would start by the letters DEF, which stands for definition or to define. And then you would give your function a name. And my test function is going to be called hello world. And for readability's sake, I'm going to separate it by an underscore. Next thing you would do is to uh, define your input parameters. Since my simple function doesn't have any, I'll just do an open and close paren. After that, you put in uh, a colon to say that your definition is over. Next, you're ready to start writing your block of code for your hello world function. And Code Sculptor automatically indented the code for me. And this is to tell Python that your new block of code begins here. And when that indentation is over, Python knows that your code block is ending. My hello world function is simply going to print out the words hello world. All right, now let's go ahead and test this by calling this function. And just as I expected, I get the output hello world in the console. All right, let's look at another function. Here I have a function that takes in an input parameter. My simple function is called say hello, and it takes in one parameter, and I've named it recipient. And it's a pretty simple function. It just prints the output out to the console. So let's go ahead and test this function. So I'm going to press the play button here. Oh, and I get an error here. So let's see what this error says. It says type error, say hello, takes exactly one arguments and zero for a given. All right, silly me. I made a function that expects one parameter and I didn't pass it any. So let's go ahead and give it the parameter that it's looking for or the value that it's looking for. So I'm going to put in the value Tom, which is a string. And let's run this function again. And just as I expected, the function tells me, hi, Tom. OK, let's look at another example. I have another simple function here. This function is called double my money, and it takes in one input parameter, which I've named input money. And when we look at the code here, we see a new keyword here, which is the return keyword. And it takes in my input parameter, multiplies it by 2, and returns that value. 
just as the name implies, that is exactly what that keyword does. It returns a value from a function to whatever that called it. So let's test this out. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called more money. And I'm going to call my function my money. And I'm going to pass it $100. And whatever this function is returning will be put in into this variable. And to test that theory out, let's print that variable out. And when we run this program, it tells me that my money is not defined because my function is actually called double my money. All right, so we called the function with 100, it multiplied it by 2, and it returned that value. And that value was placed in this more money variable. And then when we printed that variable out, it outed out uh, the value it contained into the, into the console. As conclusion, I want to go over the benefits of writing functions in your code. Well, a function is a block of code that you write once and you can exec execute it in all different parts of your code. And you could invoke it as many times as you want. If you find yourself writing the same code over and over again, more or less, take a step back and consider if it would make sense to convert that into a function. Secondly, functions help you in minimizing errors in your code. If you are doing the same task in 10 different places and you achieve this by writing a common function, it helps in the long run because if there is an issue, you only have to look for it in one place and fix it in that one place instead of pouring over hundreds or thousands of lines of code. Next, functions allow you to be structured. When each of your tasks in your program are defined as functions, it gets so easy to navigate through the logic of your program because it becomes much more readable and understandable by humans. And if you want to dwell over a particular function, then you could certainly do that by looking into the definition for that particular function. Okay, functions are also a way to hide uh, code from others that are using your program. You can write a code in a, in a module somewhere and allow someone else to use it. They can simply call those and get something back, but they won't be able to see all your code within your function, all your uh, secret calculations, your database connections and all. They simply call it and get a value back. And, and you don't have to worry about compromising your organization's uh, security. Another benefit of writing functions is that it allows you to work with other programmers on a common project. You may not be so great in math, but somebody else in your team might be. You so you can have somebody else in your team build all the complex math functions to make your program work. You simply need to know how to call those particular functions, right? Well, that's it for today's lesson. I hope that this tutorial was informative and uh, educational. Thank you so much for watching.